Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. We have focused a specimen of the sternum with attached costal cartilages in front of you. Now, if you were to take a good look at it, it kind of reminds you of Excalibur, the legendary sword of King Arthur. So therefore, the parts of the sternum have been named according to that of a sword. In front of us, we see this portion here. This is called the manubrium, which means the handle. This portion that we see, this is the body. This is called the gladiolus or the blade of the sword. And this is the ziphoid process of the ziphi sternum, which is the tip of the sword. So therefore, this has been likened to that of a sword. So let's take the manubrium sterni first. And let's take a look at the parts of it. Up here, we see this notch here. This is called the jugular notch. This is the notch which we can feel at the root of our neck. And in fact, this forms a, one of the boundaries of the root of the neck. On either side, we have the clavicular notch. This is where the clavicle is attached. And this forms what is known as the sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is a very strong joint. It is strengthened by an anterior and a posterior sternoclavicular ligament and a costoclavicular ligament. So therefore, the sternoclavicular joint is hardly ever dislocated in clinical practice. And in between, inside the joint, there is a disc of fibrocartilage. So therefore, the movement which occurs in the sternoclavicular joint is a sliding movement in movements of the pectoral girdle. Then we have the articulation with the first rib, costal cartilage. This is a synchondrosis. And if you look closely here, this is the manubriosternal joint. This constitutes what is known as the sternal angle of Louis. And if you were to take a look at it from the lateral aspect, and I'm turning it, you may be able to see a small anterior angulation, which of course is not so obvious in this model. That is the sternal angle. And in a living person and in yourself also, we can feel it in front of our chest. This is a very useful landmark because we cannot feel the first rib in a living person because it is covered by the clavicle. But we can feel the manubrial sternal angle of Louis. And we know that attached at the junction of the manubrial sternal joint is the second rib costal cartilage. So once we have felt this, we know that the attached rib is the second one and therefore we can count the intercostal spaces from there onwards. We know that this is the second intercostal space, third intercostal space and so on and so forth. That is the importance of the manubrial sternal angle. Now let's come to the body here. Body, if you look very closely, it has got four segments. These are the embryonic remnants of what are known as sternic prey, which correspond to the ossification centers. The manubrium comes from one ossification center, the sternum body comes from four ossification centers or the sturdy brae and the ziphoid process comes from one ossification center. Later on after birth they all fuse and therefore they form a small ridge here. And at the junction of fusion of the sturdy brae we have the ribs. So starting from this one we have the third rib here, we have the fourth rib, we have the fifth rib, we have the sixth rib and of course the seventh rib fuses at the junction of the ziphi sternal joint. The second rib onwards, junction with the sternum is a synovial joint. So there is a small degree of movement possible. However, in old age, this articulation can get ossified. So this is the body of the sternum. This is the ziphoid process. This is the one which we can feel in our epigastrium. And therefore, this is the ziphi sternal joint. Ideally, the seventh costal cartilage should be articulating here. And we can see that the seventh costal cartilage is articulating here. Sometimes the eighth costal cartilage can also articulate there. Let's mention a quick subdivisions of the sternum and use them to demarcate the mediastinum. The jugular notch corresponds to the upper border of vertebra T3. The manubrial sternal joint corresponds to the upper border of vertebra T5. And the ziphi sternal joint corresponds to T9, upper border. So therefore, from this segment to this segment, this much is the superior mediastinum. From here to here, from T5 to T9, is divided into an anterior, middle and posterior mediastinum. So, having subdivided the mediastinum into superior, inferior, anterior, middle and posterior mediastinum. Let's now take a look at what are all the anatomical events that are taking place at the manubrial sternal joint level or the sternal angle of Louis, which we said is at the level of upper border of T5 vertebra. This is the place where the trachea divides into right and left principal bronchus. This is the place where the ascending aorta ends, the arch of aorta begins, the arch of aorta ends, the descending thoracic aorta begins. This is the level approximately where the pulmonary trunk divides. And this is the level where the thoracic duct deviates to the left, approximately the level of T5 vertebra and goes to the left side. So these are all the anatomical events which are taking place at the level of the manubrial sternal angle of Louis, that is the T5 level. Antimediastinum is mostly empty. In children, it can contain the thymus. We can have a superior sternopericardial ligament attached to the manubrium sterni and the pericardium. We can have an inferior sternopericardial ligament attached to the pericardium and to the ziphoid process. These are some structures which can be present in the anterior mediastinum. Let's come to the muscles which are attached to each of these parts. Attached to the manubrium sterni, we have on the anterior surface is the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. 
If I turn it around, attached to the inner surface near the upper part, we have the sternohyoid and the sternothyroid muscles, which are the infrahyoid strap muscles. Attached to the jugular notch, we have the anterior and the posterior layers of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. And in this location, there's a small space, which is referred to as the suprasternal space of burns, which contains the jugular venous arch and a lymph node. Attached to the sides of the sternum, we have the sternocostal origin of the pectoralis major along this. And on the inner surface of the sternum, we have attached the transversus thoracis muscle, which attaches by multiple slips like this, three or four slips of the transversus thoracis. They constitute innermost layer of the intercostal muscles. And running on either side of the sternum on the inner surface, we have the internal thoracic artery and the internal thoracic vein till the sixth space. So therefore, this is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth space. And from the seventh space downwards, it becomes musculophrenic artery, which runs and it supplies the diaphragm. Let's come to a few clinical correlations pertaining to the sternum at this juncture. Sternum surprisingly does not have too many clinical correlations. We can use the sternum for bone marrow biopsy because it is filled with bone marrow inside spongy bone inside. And therefore, it can be used for bone marrow biopsy and bone marrow smear. One more clinical correlation pertaining to the sternum refers to what is known as median sternotomy. When we split open the sternum in the midline to do an intrathoracic procedure. And thereafter, we have to repair the sternum by means of steel sutures. Sternal fracture is not very common, but it can happen. Repeated punches to the chest can lead to sternal fractures. The sternum rarely can be bifid because of failure of fusion of the two halves. And rarely there can be also an opening, again, to failure of fusion of the two halves. When we are giving an external cardiac compression in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we should usually compress in the lower half of the sternum. In old age, when we are giving a cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we can actually sometimes feel the costal cartilages and the sternocostal joints popping because they are calcified. And rarely, they can also lead to surgical emphysema. It has also been documented that if by mistake, if a person gives compression low down and over the xiphysternal joint or below that, then the xiphoid can fracture from the xiphysternal joint and it can penetrate into the abdomen and can enter into the liver producing liver hemorrhage. So, so these are all the points which I want to mention about the sternum. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Have a nice day.